Well, hello everybody. Danny back from Deep South Homestead on porch time. Guys, I'm sitting in my shop. It's been trying to uh, sprinkle all morning, which I didn't let that stop me. This one just worked in the high tunnel and I jumped on the tractor with a bush hog and I've been bush hogging all morning. My pond had become a jungle around the edges of it. I got it all taken care of in the rain. It, uh, it's very cool this morning. That's one thing that's highly unusual right now is that it's actually cool. It's cloudy, uh, like I said, drizzly. These are days in the deep south that you dream about this time of the year. We have been fighting this dome of heat that had been over us now for the last month. Our heat index is, you know, like I told you, has been over 100 almost every day. No rain. And then all of a sudden, here about three or four days ago, we started getting a little 15 minute shower. And then a little bit later in the day, we get another 10, 15 minute shower, which is actually is very, very good for gardening. It's not coming in these deluges of just downpours and stuff like that. Now, it doesn't put any water in the pond or anything like that, because ponds really, are, this pond's full here but we're getting these nice little showers. Uh, I think a total that we got one day was like three eighths of an inch. And then a couple of days later, we got another three eighths of an inch. Then we got an eighth of an inch. Then we got a quarter of an inch, this type of stuff. You know, it adds up in over time, which is uh, great for our Vago beds we have outside here. I mean, it's not in the high tunnel. They're sitting out uh, in, around the buildings out here. The stuff in them is flourishing. Uh, the Danny corn is popping. I mean, it's just enough that rain that it keeps it vibrant, dark green, and the ears are just swelling up really, really big. So they're doing good. I'm the grass for the cattle's all growing good. You know, y'all know I just put up another paddock, and it's probably going to be the final paddock I'm going to build for quite some time. I'm trying. I've got five now. I'm trying to see if I can't rotate those cows out in those paddocks where I don't have to, uh, you know, I don't have to feed them or anything like that. Like this morning, normally my cows is in the barn sitting up there screaming, ready to be fed. Well, this morning uh, I came over and they were sitting out here at the gate waiting to go into the new paddock. So I didn't have to feed them this morning. And that was, that's a plus. That's one more day of feed that I have that I wasn't expecting. And then I'm not having to give them any hay or anything like that. Now I do keep minerals to them with this dark green grass because of the magnesium deficiency they can experience. But uh, that's a little bit about what's going on here. I mean, things is really, I mean, you see the shop here. I got my vice moved over here uh, from Deep South Homestead. We got, uh, this was a big giant laminated beam right here that was in a, uh, that I had left over off a job years ago. You know, I, some people call me a pack rat, but I don't throw a lot of stuff away if I think someday I might have a use for it. Well, this thing has got this big old laminated beam here. We uh, got the six by six mounted here and concreted anchors in the floor and hooked to the top board up here and this thing is it's solid and then back over here there's another post and I've always wanted my bench grinder mounted out where I, I can get to it to grind and do things you know so I finally got that mounted just a little bit kind of like I did my vice it's not near as heavy duty as the vice is but I'm excited about that I've got some uh, studs are all around on this side of the shop in here. I've got the plug-in boxes in. I began to start running my wiring from box to box, and I don't have any electricity in the shop yet, but I'm going ahead and uh, I'm going to run it all to a main panel over here on the other side and have it ready so that whichever way I decide to go, whether, whether I decide to run my own underground, <coughs> uh, change my boxes out here, and run my own underground, or if I have the power company come in and uh, you know put me another meter. I really don't want another meter because it's another bill that I have to pay, and and if I don't even use it, I still have to pay a bill, and I would rather not do that. So 
that's where I'm at. We're uh, actively getting there. It's just uh, it's taking me time. By the time I, you know, take care of other projects on the property and then spend a few little time in the shop, like right now, it's actually raining now, and inside the shop here, you really can't hardly hear it because I had the top insulated. Now we are going to insulate all the walls around in here so that we. Uh, we'll have it, and at some point, I'll probably put a mini split in here to uh, help, con you know, have it climate controlled anyway. Things like this has always been my dream ever since I was a young man. Uh, I did have a very nice barn one time as I, and a shop together when I lived way away from here uh, in my 20s, and I, I sold it. I had a giant pecan orchard, all that kind of stuff, sold all that. And I moved over to uh, to Deep South, where it's at now. And somewhat, sometimes I a little bit regret it, sometimes I don't. But now in my older age, the Lord has given me back my pecan orchard that I once had. And I'm tickled to death about that. But, um, you know, as I was thinking about porch time today, I uh, on the tractor all morning I've been thinking about porch time and what you know what I, my, my, my goal in life is to do two things one is to honor and glorify the Lord every day of my life secondly is to be a blessing to others you know those are the two things that I strive for on a daily basis uh, I always pray that the Lord would bless me so that I would have to bless others with and I constantly those who know me and are very close to me know that I constantly give. I mean, I I give, give, give. Wanda's the same way. Wanda gives um, so much stuff. I mean, we give so much stuff away that because, uh, you know, I can't take it with me when I go. And if I'm not using it on a daily basis or at least use it periodically and it just sits and takes up space, I usually will give it to someone. Uh, now I do, yeah, I do sell some of my stuff. You know, the bigger items and stuff like that. I do sell that stuff, but but I don't usually charge. Especially if I know the person, I don't usually charge a, a lot of money for it, because I've also learned that money is not my god, and I don't care if I do have it. I don't care if I don't have it. I mean, uh, it's just a medium of exchange for me. And I've always been that way. But as I began to focus on the tractor while I was bush hogging, I said, Lord, I really want to be a blessing to people, you know. And and I had a conversation this week with one of my with, with one of my brothers in Christ. And we discussed some things over the phone. I wouldn't I wouldn't go into any in, in depth with him over the phone because I know my phones are watched and listened to. But he asked a question of me and this is something that I've been working on for several weeks to actually try to put together because the problem is when I try to talk to people about this very subject, nobody wants to listen. Uh, and that is the question that was asked to me by the brother was, have I noticed how everybody is starting to lose their mind and just panic and uh, they're starting to get depressed, uh, anxiety, all these things are beginning to set into, uh, especially people who do YouTube. And which I don't know about people who do YouTube because I don't keep up with nobody. I don't even watch nobody hardly. I got too much to do myself. Uh, I barely have time to make these videos, but and, and as I talked with my brother, I, you know, I told him, I said, yes, and I know why it's happening. It's a very logical reason why it's happening. Uh, it happens every X number of years, uh, and the problem is most people, when I try to tell them why this is going on, they turn a deaf ear to me, and, and I can look at their eyes as soon as I mention it, I can tell instantly they don't you know I mentioned this on the live stream the other night but if you go back and study sun sun cycles and uh, solar cycles if you want to call it that throughout 
history. And see, the history is another thing. We've got where the only history we get is what they want us to have. But if you can get your hands on some of the actual accurate history from way, I'm talking about from way back. And I've mentioned to y'all that Sasha Dobler, a friend of ours, has a book out that's, that really does good on these solar cycles. Now, empires and dynasties and stuff like that rise and fall with the solar cycles. And it took a while for mankind to figure out why this happened, but why, when it happens, the technology we have today, we can understand it because we're, you know, we have some pretty interesting technology. That is that the magnetosphere of the Earth, when we go into these solar cycles, the magnetosphere of the Earth begins to relax. And as it does, the, it, it tampers with man's mental abilities. Anytime throughout history when the magnetosphere would begin to act up in solar, in, during certain solar cycles, men would go to war because of their minds. If people get more angry during these times of solar cycles. People uh, become schizophrenic. People become all these things that they normally are not because it tampers with the way the brain functions. And when you sit down and you try to start talking about this with people, most people's like, oh Lord, here we go again. Something else, you know. Rather than being attentive, now I, I can't say anything, I was like that in the beginning. But now that I understand more about how the magnetosphere affects the human body and how it affects life on this earth, how it affects the soil, how it affects the plants, and really it was plant growth that really got me interested in it. And plants do not grow well during these solar cycles if they're in the actual earth. And that's because of the gamma rays that the earth puts out. It's a radiation. Uh, the roots on the plants never really develop like they need to. And that's why I've always encouraged during these next couple of three years is to try to get raised beds, try to get up out of the ground and try to get in a raised bed using electroculture, taking the the energy that's in the ether and actually it's not magic okay and and putting it back to the soil and taking the microbes that's in the soil and the nutrition that's in the soil and making it become alive much like when we have thunderstorms that come through and after a lightning storm uh, the nitrogen is fixed in the atmosphere the plants can absorb that back into them and they really pop after a thunderstorm it does Electroculture basically works the same way. Now, when you try to start talking this kind of language to most people, most people just turn a deaf ear to you. And they don't want to hear it. But the honest truth is, God made it this way. God made the thunderstorms and, and the, the, the way that the magnetosphere worked. I mean, he, and the UV rays from the sun. I mean, God created all this stuff for our benefits. You know, when the sun's in a normal solar cycle, it gives off a UV ray that really benefits us and keeps down viruses. But during these solar cycles where it's on a low side like this, it's not giving off those UV rays like it should, and viruses run rampant. Insects become crazy during these solar cycles. And when it does, there's famines that happen. And because we have droughts and floods and all this kind of stuff, and when you have famines, dynasties and empires rise and fall based on famines and stuff because there's no food. They have to go in and take over places where the, where the atmosphere, and, they, and there is food. And they have to wipe out so many people so that there's a, they have the food to feed what's left. I mean, this is, this is not hearsay, speculation, uh, anything like that. This is history, guys. If you go back and study history, it's there. Now, getting back to the question, why is everybody losing their minds? It has to do with the magnetosphere. But my topic today is not any of that. It has to do with that. But it's not that. Okay? 
it deals with more of um, calm down. Just calm down. That's what's happening to everybody. Everybody is panicking because everybody's out here and, there, and lots of people are looking at it like doom and gloom. Oh my gosh, there's not going to be any food. Uh, there, you know, there's, we're going to go to war. Well, we're not going to war. We're already at war. We, matter of fact, we stay at war most of the time. And, and there's famines. Yes, there's famines. There's, there's shortages of certain types of food. We're just not being told. And yes, there's things happening in the atmosphere. Yes, there's some events coming that's going to be devastating to this earth here in the near future. But guys, let me tell you something. All of it, literally, is only allowed because the Lord permits it. These things that we're going through are cyclical. And because we haven't had it in our lifetime, we haven't had it in the last 100 or 200 or 300 or 400 years, we think, well, this is no way this is possible. Yes, it is. Some things cyclical only come around every 1,500, every 2,000, every 3,600, every 12,000 years. I mean, some of these things only do that. There's a binary planetary system coming into our solar system that will dwarf our solar system. There's nobody talking about this. Because, you know why? People wouldn't believe you if you told them. And when it actually things begin to get worse and worse and worse, people are literally losing their minds because they're panicking. They're not prepared. They're saying, I, I'm not prepared. I don't have the money to prepare. I don't this. I don't that. What if? What if? What if? What if it snows in July in the deep south? You know what I mean? Is there anything you can do about it? The answer is absolutely no. First of all, take your eyes off of mankind. Take your eyes off of what might happen and put your eyes on the Lord and calm down. Throughout the whole scriptures, all you will see in the scriptures is the Lord says, how many times? I don't even know how many times. I did know, but it ain't coming to my mind right now. Fear not. Fear not, the Lord says. You go over to Matthew 24, he tells you all the things when the disciple says, Lord, when is the end? And in the Olivet Discourse, he just gives it to them right there, right off the top of his head. You know, earthquakes, famines, pestilences. Then he looks at him and he says, but the end ain't yet. In other words, it ain't over. But be not discouraged. These things, he said, must come to pass. In other words... If Christ is in control of allowing these things to happen, then I have absolutely nothing to worry about. You know, people give the devil too much credit. Every time something goes wrong, they go, oh, well, the devil, the devil's got to be doing it. The devil don't always do everything. Do you know that the devil cannot do nothing unless God permits him to do it? We have to stop and think about that. Nothing in this world can be, per, can be done, good or bad, unless the Lord permits it to happen. So calm down. Just calm down. Quit freaking out because you don't have enough food to last for 10 years. i got to calm down, okay? The bottom line is this. I, I can get worked up when I... When I was younger and I stood behind a pulpit, let me tell you something, I could get so worked up, but now that I'm older, I've studied the scriptures so much, there ain't nowhere in the scriptures I find where Christ stood up in a synagogue or in a boat or, or behind any podium or anything like that and screamed and hollered and beat his fist and no. It's just not there. Stop and think about what you do read. So many things. Uh, I've been eating peanuts, guys. i got pieces of stuff on my lip here. Uh, so many things. We don't really stop and, 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 and soak up. You know, like David says in the Psalms, Selah. That means to stop and to meditate upon what you just read. So many times we don't stop and meditate on what we just saw Christ do. It says, 
Christ stood up in the synagogue and he opened the book. Now, they weren't books. We didn't have a Bible then. They were scrolls. He would open a book like Isaiah. Normally, lots of times it was Isaiah he opened. And he would read a passage and then he would close it back and he'd go sit down. And what did it say he would do? It says that he taught the people. What did he do with the disciples? He taught the disciples. When the boat was being tossed to and fro out in the water in the Sea of Galilee, about to be flipped over, the, the disciples were going bananas. They're like, and they run down into the lower parts of the boat. Master, Master, get up! Do you not know that we're about to capsize here? And he walks up and he's looking at them. He's like, oh, ye of little faith. Peace be still. And the water, just that fast, like a sheet of glass. That's where we're at today. We're like the disciples was in that boat when that storm was coming. And they were being tossed all around. And they were rowing frantically all night long trying to get to shore and they couldn't get to shore. That's where we're at today, folks. We're frantically rowing against nature, against mankind. We're trying our best to have our lives set up so that if something happens, we can still live like we live now. And let me, I, I, let me give you a news flash. If something happens, that ain't going to happen. Okay? When you learn to survive, your life will change forever. Air conditioning will probably go away. Central heating will go away. Running water will go away. Cell phones will go away. I mean, all these things, if something massive happens, all this stuff goes away. Is your house set up where it can stand heat? Is it set up where it can stand cold? If you live in the south and you got sheetrock all in your house, it'll mold. I'm just going to tell you from the humidity. If you live up north and the wintertime comes and you ain't got some way to stay warm where you can burn something to stay warm besides electricity, or gas, you're going to freeze to death. I mean, we wrestle against this type of stuff. Just like the disciples wrestled against that wind and that stuff like this. And when Christ came to the top, he just looked at it and said, Peace be still. In other words, calm down. And the winds lay down. Even the... And the disciples looked at him and said, What manner of man is this that even the weather obeys him? Can you imagine? Guys, that's the power our Father has. And we sit back and we row against what's happening in our lives today. And yet, it does us no good like the disciples. It was doing them no good. They, I mean, they were panicking. And we're doing the same today. So just calm down. Your father has this. It's going to be okay. Will we suffer? Yes. Stop and think about it. The scripture tells us we will suffer for his name's sake. So don't panic about it. He's already told us it's going to happen. And we look at everything as doom and gloom. You know what? If there's a hurricane coming in this Gulf Coast down here where I live at, I would much rather somebody look at me and tell me that there's a Cat 5 hurricane coming in this Gulf down here and I better make provisions for it than for me to never be told and sitting here at my house and all of a sudden I go to bed at night and wake up the next morning and there's 200 mile an hour winds blowing out here, timber is blowing down, roofs is coming off of houses, shingles is coming off and you know, junk's going everywhere because we ain't picked and cleaned up nothing. Windows is being busted out. I would whole lots rather know that something's going to happen. Guys, that's not doom and gloom. That's called wisdom. That's called wisdom and understanding. So when somebody looks at you and tells you that the magnetosphere of the earth is weakening and people are going to start losing their minds, don't panic. Calm down. This is cyclical. Man didn't do this. Nature does this ever so often. God has it in His divine plan. And when we come to the end of an era, 
And we're fixing to. We're fixing to come to the end of the church age. Now, is the world going to end? No. The world's not going to end. The world's going to continue right on. But this age will end. And life as we know it will end. We will go into a new era. As the elites call it, the reset. Yeah, it resets happen all, all throughout history. We've had resets. It's not nothing new. Like Solomon said, there's nothing new under the sun. This happens all the time. This magnetosphere issue that we're fixing to go into, and where people start losing their minds and all kinds of, uh, you know, they get nervous and scared and all this kind of stuff. This has happened before. And man has survived. Empires, some of them go away. Some of them are just birthed during these times. It's survival of the fittest. Those who are prepared are the ones who survive. And my encouragement to you today is to be prepared. I've told y'all for quite some time to build your faith. I've known this is coming for, for quite a while. We've got some events coming this year. Some in July, some in October, some in June, some in November. How will they turn out? I'm not God. I can't answer that. I just know they're coming. And all I can do is tell you to be prepared as much as you can. Because don't be like the ten virgins. Only five of them took enough oil. And when the bridegroom came, the others were gone back to get more oil. They weren't prepared. They got left behind. Guys, don't get left behind. Calm down. Come to know the Lord as your personal Savior. And be prepared for what's coming. I think that if you'll just do those few little things, calming down, and remember, the Lord said, Those who the Father has given unto me, nothing can take them out of his hand. Literally nothing. So you are safe in the hands of your Father. Thank you guys from Deep South Homestead.